time. Here's O. Henry's famous Robin Hood of the Old West, the Cisco Kid. I contacted a fellow named Steve Johnson of Elbridge, New York, and I ordered a photo fact for the TV. Now, Steve Johnson has a website called stevejohnson.com, or Steve's Antique Technology. He sells uh, a lot of different photo facts for a lot of different things at a very reasonable price. I think it was like 7 or $8. I can't remember what it was. It was not very much, but it's a worthwhile investment. I told you before, uh, for those of you who have watched my radio restorations, paperwork is probably, without, without the proper paperwork, you're basically shooting in the dark. Uh, and uh, I knew that this television had a photo fact before I even bought it. I went out, I searched, I found it, and I said, good, there's a photo fact available, I know where to get it. And I went ahead and contacted the guy that owned the television, and I bought it from him. Had I not found a photo fact, I would not have bought it. Here's why. Here's the alignment procedures. Now this whole thing came inside of a, a manila envelope here and it has a big old TV on the front, which is the one we're working on. Kind of cool. And inside there were uh, parts lists, drawings, tube placement locations, parts locations. This is an alignment procedure here which ought to be real fun. I've never done one of those before. And here's a little information on resistance measurements in the uh, tuner. Here we are with uh, the various uh, tube place uh, where the tubes are located on the chassis. This is the capacitor uh, alignment information looking at the bottom of the uh, chassis where all the different capacitors are and the ones that you can adjust to do your alignments. Here's a, little, a few more. Here's the bottom of the tuner. And over here it has, uh, this is the top view that shows all the uh, capacitors and coils and whatnot. We're going to take a look at that here in a few seconds. It gives you another picture of the bottom which covers the resistors. Up there was the capacitors. Here's the, all the resistors. It's resistor and inductors actually, which are coils. The location and where they're at on the other side. No, the back with more information and more parts list for the dial lights and miscellaneous and horizontal sweep circuit adjusts, things I don't know anything about yet. But I'm sure I need to know that. <laughs> and this is a total parts list of everything that's in that TV. It's uh, front and rear. Everything. Caps, coils, rectifiers, fuses, resistors, uh, transformers, everything you need to know. All parts. It gives uh, voltage readings, resistance readings, capacitance readings, I mean uh, measurements uh, or values I should say for all that. And last but not least I've got this big giant schematic. Looks very intimidating. Let me put it up here where we can kind of take a look at it. Looks very intimidating but it's not. You know, if you just kind of take it in chunks, like from here to there, and then from the middle to here, and then from here to there. The same basic uh, procedures apply to the schematic that you're looking at right here as it did to the uh, smaller schematics and the radios we've already done for those of you who have followed my schematic, my uh, uh, radio repair bids. And uh, it's just north, south, east, and west, you know, just a bunch of lines running north, south, east, and west, and some of them run into resistors, and some of them run into capacitors, and some of them run into inductors or tubes, you know, just streets and avenues with intersections, that's all there is to it. And uh, I've done a lot of marking on this thing already, and we'll cover a lot of that later as we go through it. But... Right now, what I want to do is kind of go over a few parts that are on the top of the chassis, what I've managed to figure out and find out by using 
all of this information and is bouncing the schematic against this. And uh, let's do that here. Let me go ahead and shut this off and get everything set up. But anyway, I found out what uh, this tube was and this tube was. This is the uh, horizontal output tube right here. And that tube is located right there. And it feeds over to the uh, high voltage transformer which is that thing down in there. There's the wire coming out, going into the transformer. Get this light down a little better where we can see. That wire right there goes over there into that transformer that's covered with wax. Now the other side of that transformer, I mean there's, there's various takeoffs of this transformer uh, down here and here, but that right here it comes out and feeds into what's called the IB3GT which is the high voltage rectifier this tube right here. It goes in on this one, comes out on this wire right here up to the, the cap on this one. Now what happened, what we're doing, what this setup is doing is this tube up here requires thousands of volts. In this case 13,200 volts. It requires that many volts to operate properly. So what they have to do is step it up. They have to step that voltage up coming out of this tube and get it up that high and of course it will be AC voltage they need to rectify it back to DC and it has to be something that can handle 13,200 volts which would be this one right here now the reason I have this thing marked in red it says do not measure well I can see why I mean if I took my little old multimeter here and I stuck it into 13,200 volts I'd you know not only would the uh, multimeter be a crispy critter but so would I so they say do not measure any of this stuff here and according to Gino I've already had a conversation with him he used to work on these old TVs too he said the uh, the damper tube which would be at this one right here and the horizontal output tube just go ahead and replace those he said because our testers tube testers will not reliably uh, test those things I, I can understand why so 13,000 volts being fed from this transformer right here we have to be very careful that's why it's inside a cage and that's why it's called the high voltage cage incidentally uh, that transformer back there that I called the high voltage transformer on the parts list it's called the horizontal output transformer and it's also called the flyback transformer take your pick learn to block, mister. Stop that knife. Once you will put your wishbone where your backbone ought to be. Give me that knife. The rest of the top of this television in many ways is just like a, a standard old vintage radio that we've worked on in the past. It's got uh, various IF coils for both the audio and the video, no different than the IF coil in a, in a standard old vintage radio, which we've got, they have primary and secondaries, they're just little transformers is all. We've got a transformer here, a transformer here, which is the power transformer of course, we've got a transformer here, here, uh, here, we've got one here, and uh, this little booger right here is just a, just a slug tuned coil, and I believe it's the same with this. This looks like a transformer, but it's not, it's a choke and it's, it's a filter choke, a DC filter choke and it, it's used in conjunction uh, with these selenium rectifiers and they are selenium rectifiers and it's also used in conjunction with the uh, filter capacitors and speaking of filter capacitors we've got a couple of filter cans here uh, this is uh, this cap has four in, uh, this can has four inside of it and uh, this can has three caps inside of it and uh, this one here, you'll recall, look at all that stuff on there, all that crap. Well, I think that's nothing more than melted wax, just melted wax. And uh, at first I said, my God, the whole guts of that inductor. This is a DC filter choke. It's a, it's a coil, an inductor. It just has a wire in and a wire out and uh, no primary and secondary. Just an, I'll show you what it looks like on the old schematic here. That's it right there. And 
it just has a wire connected to the positive of one filter capacitor and the other side of the inductor the, or the coil the choke is connected to the positive of another uh, electrolytic capacitor so that's what we're looking at right there that booger there and it's according to the the, the uh, schematic it's supposed to be 39 ohms through that thing well I went ahead and ohmed it out and I stuck one of the wires coming out is right here it's hooked to the uh, selenium rectifier the positive side and the other one goes down underneath and hooks to a capacitor uh, electrolytic capacitor and I ohmed it out and guess what 39 ohms so you know that thing might be good pick it up no I won't you'll kill me now get out of here you coward and take your friend with you he means you senor but guess what I don't want to take a chance. I don't want to work on this entire thing. Change tubes, change resistors, change everything else, and then find out that this thing is shorted, maybe to the chassis, and will wipe out my power transformer. I don't know. And uh, I'm going to look around and see if I can't find a, uh, a choke for that thing. And it's rated at, uh, I did a little looking around and studying, it's, it's a uh, it's an 800 millihenry choke. Uh, rated at 200 volts or above, and it has to be able to handle uh, 290 milliamps. And of course, the resistance is 39 ohms. So I'm going to try to come up with something close to that somewhere. I've already checked radio days, and at eh, first glance, it didn't look like they've got anything, you know, in the ballpark. But I need to ask a few questions from some very learned people. Incidentally, this little thing right here, this is kind of a neat deal. This sticking out of the back of the high voltage cage is a ceramic capacitor and it's rated at 20,000 volts now why would that be rated at 20,000 volts because it's connected to the suction cup connector that goes into the picture tube and uh, one end of it is connected to ground right here and the other end is connected to this cap right here so yes, it would, and since there's like 13,200 volts, I said coming out of that thing, maybe maybe a little more. Uh, it would have to be a very very uh, high voltage rated cap, and, but it's only five uh, 500 uh, peak farads, <laughs> you know. Last minute shuffle uh, frequencies to ground that's not needed, uh, so the picture tube gets straight DC. Well, that's it. You know, there's really nothing here. You know, there's just standard old IF cans uh, and uh, capacitor, uh, filter cans, and a choke, a couple of transformers, and, and here's a couple more uh, electrolytic capacitors under here. So we'll have to be replacing all these. Big job ahead of us. Big job. And uh, I, I haven't looked into the uh, RF tuner yet, but from what I understand, it's just an oscillator. You know, as you flip the channel, you make contact with different coils and it comes up with a different frequency and you tune in your channel. <laughs> Not much to it. Well that's it and as I learn more I'll get back with you. Uh, it'll probably be a fairly long stretch uh, until the next video and uh, if so I'm sorry but there's a lot of things I need to do uh, uh, to this thing and get it ready so we can uh, have a good product when we're done. Anyway, we'll see you then. I appreciate you all uh, watching. This is John. Goodbye, amigos. See you soon! <laughs>